I think it might be helpful to start with some of these culture questions, the culture and history of um, bears. What does it mean to you to be a bear? What is a bear? I know what a bear means, but maybe our audience members, wink, wink, don't know. Um, what does it mean to be a bear? Grab that one, Louis. Uh, well, sure, I will. But why not? I've been, I've been around the longest, I think, <laughs> as far as uh, this organization. Um, you know, there's the classic definition of the bear in our community, where it's just like a middle-aged man with a graying beard and, you know, uh, likes to go out and drink a lot of beer and, and, and party hardy and have a lot of fun and eat, eat, eat good. Um, what I have found in this community uh, is, number one, acceptance. Um, you know, the, the whole, I, for, for lack of a better phrase, pretty boy, we all love our eye candy. Um, I think it's really important to understand that this community accepts everybody. Um, you know, there, the, whatever your size, whatever your age, you know, there's people interested in each other and meeting each other, making a connection. And that's really where, you know, I think, you know, what Lex has done with some ideas for, you know, the bear colors and representation, acceptance is one of the key aspects is, you know, you can be a bear, you can be a chaser, you can be whatever animal, otter, wolf, whatever it is. It doesn't matter in our community as long as you come in and accept everybody else in the community and, and be a civil uh, participant. So, you know, the, the bear community, I think has been somewhat maligned for being, you know, middle-aged old white men that, that gather. I, I have found n everything different in this community, especially in the New England area. Excellent. Anyone else want to jump on that bear definition? I mean, I'll just say that, I mean, I think one of the things that we often try to do when we sit down and talk is that, you know, we always want to make sure that we're using the word bear in a way that is kind of not narrowing it down to the point of like, oh, it's this particular look or it's this particular attitude. But it, like Lewis said, it's kind of all perspectives. I think one of my favorite things that was ever said uh, of, from a former board member who uh, he would often get the question of like, well, you don't really like look like a bear. What, what, what do you call yourself? And he would say, I call myself a flamenco. <laughs> and I love that uh, because I mean, I kind of think that it, it speaks to, you know, what we're trying to do in terms of, yeah, we have this bear identity, but there's also a lot going on in our community. And I think having kind of that broad mindset really gets at those, those folks. Yeah, well, I think from what you're both describing, it sounds more like to be a bear is, is partially to um, have a certain way of life, to have a certain perspective. And like you're saying, not a specific mold of like, a bear is a man who is over 35 years old, who is X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's wonderful. I think that's a really great segue into um, this idea of the bear flag and what do those colors mean to the bear community or maybe not, <laughs> maybe not mean historically. So Lex, you've done some research into that, right? Mm -hmm. I definitely have. So initially the creator uh, or the person who de designed the bear flag designed it where he picked those colors to represent all the different races of bears to um, symbolize inclusivity uh, for all. <clears throat> but, um, you know, one uh, idea I had uh, that, that I ended up bringing to the board and, you know, started on this whole big journey in creating it was to make, um, you know, like the Buddhist prayer style um, flag banner pennant thing, um, but do it to the colors of the flag. And I wanted, I thought, you know, it would be great if we could put values to the colors, like, you know, the gay flag, like the, the, the gay pride flag does, all the other ones. And so I took the, um, our motto, um, brotherhood, camaraderie, and community. And I, um, and then I applied other values that I 
personally experienced in the community for like what um what essentially like saved me from myself and that was you know um acceptance um inclusion comfortable confidence um which on a side note the comfortable is actually go supposed to go after confidence it's my bad for for, for, for that email <laughs> but um I don't think they're in order. Can folks see? I'm sorry to cut you off, Lex. Can folks see the the bear flag screen here? And like the, what so the to, to to go with like the the colors as well. The reason why I put um, the values for the colors, aside from the fact of having it spell out the anagram basic, um, you know, brotherhood is brown because it's like masculine and earthy, and uh, acceptance is orange because it's like warm and like like a hug. Um, community is the gold because it's unifying, bright, supportive. Camaraderie is um, is nude because it's a neutral, equal, encompassing, inclusion, white. Uh, it's the focal point of all colors. Um, confidence is gray because it's professional and comfort is black because it's, you know, like a comforting hug you know like with comfortable for me is you know like i was literally at you know that like 365 a uh, burger restaurant in p town where i was ugly eating a burger and i was like feeling my oats it's like chowing down and the table across from me there's this guy like after i'd done but uh, finished eating i felt i was like oh yeah he, he looked over and said hey sexy and i was like you just hit on me while i after I ugly ate a burger, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> and it's like, that would never have happened in any other community, like ever, you know, where I'm so comfortable in myself that I don't even care what anybody, I'm like ignoring everyone else around me. I'm focusing on this burger and how good it tastes. And right after I finish it, someone hits on me. Like, in any other community, never would have happened. So Excellent. That's, that's really why I really connected with the whole comfortable thing, you know, feel good about how you look like, you know, you are you be comfortable and confident and, you know, you're beautiful the way you are. And that is literally like the message I've received from every single bear I've ever talked to, you know, and like in the rest of the gay community, no, it's like all about like, oh, you have to have abs. You have to like look a certain way and be thin and everything. And, you know, being part of the community, I realized I'm beautiful the way I am and I don't need to change that. And that's the real, a big reason why I love it so much. Wonderful. So. Well, I'm literally I think eating pasta. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's dinner time. Um, but, but also, I think that that's so wonderful because often, like you were saying, the, the rainbow flag, um, in the abstract, I know that those colors have meaning, but a lot of times I'm not thinking about the meanings of the colors. I'm thinking about the meaning of the community, and this is a really great partnership of, or, or intersection of the values of the community and your organization and taking the historic flag used for the bear community and making it mean something for you all in 2020, which is awesome. So are those flags, they're gonna go on your website, right? Yeah, currently um, we're, I mean, I think we're gonna use them in a number of different places, but right now Lex is actually going through the process of actually trying to find um, uh, someone to actually manufacture them as a pennant that uh, can be carried so that we can carry it in, in you know, the pride march and things like that. I, I just wanted to jump on to something that Lex said and it made me, as he was talking, and it kind of reminded me of an old memory that I had, which was that um, going to our favorite bar in the very, very early, early days, um, I had no sense of, you know, I really kind of didn't get our community back then. I just knew that, hey, I'm hanging out in a bar and I'm meeting people and it's fun and I'm drinking. So, um, but, you know, when I started, going to the alley, one of the things that I kind of learned within the first few years going there was that I think sometimes our, 
our broader world kind of puts us in the mind frame of, oh, only pretty boys date pretty boys and only twinks date twinks and, you know, only fat guys date fat guys and, you know, things like that. And one of the things that I saw over my beginning years at the alley was that um, there is something that we all forget, which is that there is a diversity of attraction. Um, and I think that's something that, unfortunately, marketing around us doesn't really let you in on. It kind of makes everybody kind of look homogeneous in certain ways. And I think that we should all kind of, that's part of, uh, I think, the thing that, that we really have to kind of internalize to ourselves. I think it's that moment when Lex was, you know, finishing his hamburger, which just sounded good just based on the way that Lex described it. <laughs> um, um, you know, that there are like, there's not only different kinds of people in terms of colors and shapes and heights, but there's also a variety of attraction out there. You know, there's no reason for you to be ashamed about what you are because believe it or not, somebody out there is gonna love that. Um, I think, and I so do not know the comedian's name to credit her properly, but there was a great comedian who said, you know, you guys out there, you shouldn't be hating on yourselves. The one thing you got to understand, no matter what's going on with you, somebody's going to love your ass. You know, you could have, see, I think the way she put it was that you could have buck teeth in the back of your, in the back of your head. Somebody's going to love that. And we should all kind of, I mean, that's an extreme example, obviously, but, but, you know, we should all as people keep that in mind, you know, on both ends of it, you know, what you may like may not be what other person likes, but, that's okay because, you know, if we're all okay with each other's likes and dislikes, it's a, it, it, it creates a more inclusive environment.